Hey, everybody. We are joined again by Rachel Coleman. Rachel, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for hey, having me. Every- oh, sorry, guys. Thanks for having me. Sorry, it was on my end. I apologize. <laughs> I messed up. The audio guy messed up for a second. That's okay. <laughs> hey, good start. No, <laughs> no, we appreciate you coming on. Um, a lot of lot of crazy things going on right now, and um, a, a lot to dive into, especially um, as you know, a former player and a coach, and um, and and dealing with kids now with uh, giving lessons and and also working with recruiting. We have so many questions for you, so we really appreciate you taking the time to do this with us during these crazy circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. Um... You know, it's a crazy time for everybody. Everybody's a little uncertain. So the best thing is just to keep yourself educated and, you know, communicate with other coaches, um, whether it be college coaches or travel ball coaches, to get the best information possible for the student athletes and parents who, you know, I'm sure a lot of you have a ton of questions. So that's ultimately what my goal is right now. Yes, we appreciate you taking the time because we know you're you're hectic and and crazy busy. Uh, And and for those who are just tuning in or, or new to us, um, you had joined us uh, a couple months ago, um, but you know anybody who wants to dive more into your story uh, can go into that one. But if you want to give just a quick, kind of brief background a little bit um, in where you kind of got started uh, and, and to where you are right now and what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So I started with little league um, and worked my way up through travel ball. I played D1 softball at Ryder University. I got injured, could no, could no longer play anymore, um, and I started coaching. I was a coaching minor at the University of Delaware, um, where I graduated, got a degree in sport management, and then my senior year, I was actually the volunteer assistant coach at uh, Kennesaw State University under Scott Whitlock, who's a Hall of Fame coach, and anybody who's been to the Cherry Hill Clinics knows exactly who he is. He's been absolutely amazing, amazing mentor. Um, And then from there, I went to the University of Tennessee, where I was a graduate assistant uh, manager with Ralph and Karen Weekly, um, who took me under their wing, showed me the ropes. We went to the World Series in 2015. It was just an amazing experience. And I'm super grateful for them um, for letting me into their program and really showing me the ropes. And then from there, I went to the University of Delaware, where I was the assistant coach for two years and left, got out of it. And I started coaching travel ball. Um, because that's what you do. You just, you know, you continue to love the game and just give back to it. Um, and from there, I started the recruiting process with the kids that I was coaching. And I really dug down deep into the recruiting process with those kids. And I was surprised with how much they didn't know. Um, and the parents didn't know what they should be doing with the process. So I did it, you know, locally with my kids for about two years. And then I ultimately launched softballrecruiting.com. Um, where I educate everybody throughout the country on what they should be doing with the recruiting process um, step by step um, from whether kids are starting the recruiting process or they've already started and they need, you know, guidance on what to do month to month, um, you know, from emails, when to send those emails, what you should say in those emails. um, You know, are you over contacting, under contacting, how to get the college coach to notice you from an email and get put on their list through video. Um, So just really diving down deep into that recruiting process and communicating with the college coaches to make sure that my kids are on track and doing the right things. Um, Because as you know, the recruiting world is ever changing. Um, So it's important for me to keep up with everything, especially now. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like we had, we'd started off talking about, you know, with this, this crazy situation going on with coronavirus, a lot of us in the U S if not all of us have been affected in some way by it. Uh, whether it's a family member or a team we watch on TV or a favorite player. Um, but I think a group that, you know, has been affected the most when it comes to sports is the kids that are looking to go from high school to college or they're looking to go from college to pro. Um, and they're not able to shine in their senior years or, you know, even the ones that are earlier right now in their, you know, junior years trying to really make a name for themselves this year and be noticed uh, for that recruiting process. You know, they don't, they're not able to do it. So I wanted to know what have been the biggest concerns that have come your way so far from players, from parents so far? Yeah, so a lot of questions in the air in regards to giving all of the kids a fifth year, the seniors a fifth year um, in the college world. And it really hasn't been specified exactly what that means. So again, the seniors who only had a couple weeks into the season, their season cut short, you know, giving them the opportunity to play next year 
what that looks like. And then the freshmen, sophomore, juniors, do they get a fifth year? Um, you know, people are saying yes. I talked to a college coach today about it in depth. Um, but there's no real answers in the college coaching world of what exactly that means, what it means laid out money wise, um, and ultimately how is that going to affect the future classes um, coming in? Obviously, the 20s, a lot of them, if not all of them, uh, well, not all of them, but a lot of them sign their NLIs um, in November. So they sign their NLIs, their money is awarded to them. Um, but is the NCAA going to give more than 12 scholarships to the student to a softball team um, because they're going to have kids stay that they didn't expect or are the college coaches going to have to cut back cut scholarships from um freshmen coming in who've already signed their nlis which really isn't allowed um are they gonna have to cut money from student athletes who are already there um so the real big thing is the money um and the kids who are already committed now if they allow all of the kids who are you know, on those campuses right now and a fifth year, not all of them will take that fifth year, but the ones who do, um, you know, what does that mean for the 21 and 22 class? Are they going to take as many kids roster sizes, Um, which, you know, that's probably beyond what the questions I've been asked from some of my um, kids who are, you know, in high school, but the, the conversations I'm having with the college coaches is, okay, what does that mean for roster sizes and travel rosters and budgets? Um, you know, if they're only allowed 12, how are they going to cut back? If they're allowed more than 12, a lot of the mid majors, um, that I've talked to said, my administration probably won't let me fund more than 12. So I'll have to cut back anyway. So is it, is that going to benefit the, um, the schools can, that can afford it more so than the mid majors and the ones that can't. So again, there's just so many factors in the air right now. Um, and there's no clear answer as to what's going to happen until the NCAA lays that out and what that looks like. But um, I was talking to a mid-major today who needed a 21 pitcher, you know, in the worst way. And he's, you know, still looking for that 21 pitcher. But he said, you know, if the it comes out that, you know, everybody can have an extra year, my junior pitcher already said that he, she, she would stay an extra year. Now I need a 22 pitcher. So, you know, that could afford somebody an opportunity, a 21, an opportunity um, you know, and so it's really going to affect the twenties and twenty ones, I think. You know, something just to, off of what you said, you had mentioned, is it in the budget? And I think even for me, from the outside looking in, you forget because even though it's not a professional sport, there's still a budget yes. um, for these colleges. And right now they're taking a huge hit. So, you know, I'd hate to be the ones making those decisions right now. That's got to be so difficult to, okay, do we keep these kids on? Do we take in less freshmen? What do we do about, about the ones that are resigned? And, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's just a mess right now. So like when you said that, I, it didn't even hit my mind about their budget, you know, that they have something they have to work with as well, just like uh, professional teams. Yeah, absolutely. And that's budget with scholarships, but also recruiting budgets, you know, how are yeah. they be affected? Um, mm-hmm. And going out to see kids. Um, a lot of, you know, high school ball isn't really being played right now um, because I've had coaches that said if high school ball comes back, um, what happens, you know, if high school ball comes back in May and they play May and June, how is that going to affect the recruiting season? Um, so it's just everything is up in the air right now. Um, and I'm just trying to keep all of my athletes informed on what they can be doing. Um, you know, and answering their questions as best as I possibly can and reaching out to coaches. Um, but just giving them, you know, we can create opportunities from this because now you have extra time. What opportunities can we create instead of focusing on the unknowns? Yeah. I mean, and you talk about a fifth year, is it, they're going to have to enroll in school for an entire year and pay. There's so much involved in that part of it that, yeah, just come back for a fifth year, but you're talking like a whole calendar year, a whole year of schooling. I mean, whole year of meal plans, a whole year of living on camp. I mean, there's so much more involved in it than just the 25%, 40%, whatever, whatever the student athlete is getting uh, on that side. It's kind of like, you know, I almost wonder if it would just be, why don't we just play softball in the fall and see what we can get in and then let everybody move on and then move into the spring. You know what I mean? Like instead of doing these fall scrimmages, why don't they just make it a season for these athletes and move on about their day. I mean, I, I, what do you think of that option? It's just one that I've heard, one that I think makes sense. Yeah, so I had a coach um, actually reach out to me, a D1 coach, and they said, you know, there's been talks about a summer season. 
There's been talks about a fall season for the seniors, and then the spring season includes the freshmen. Um, there's been talks about everything, but everything is just so in the air that nothing's been solidified. Um, and we really won't know until, you know, this virus starts to clear up in the United States what is even possible to conduct in the future. We don't even know if, you know, yeah. summer season is possible right now. Yeah, we have no timeline. <laughs> no, we're living <laughs> no timeline. It's crazy. None. None. <laughs> so, right. I mean, and that, how much could a summer college season affect a the recruiting world? Yeah. It, right. I mean, there's just so many things up in the air. Well, well you mentioned about... Um, you know, look, try to look at the pot, try to get the positives out of this crazy situation. So for those kids right now that maybe don't have someone like you to talk to, um, what sort of things should they be doing right now to, to keep them on the right track and focus on the right things and, and their game? Um, and you know, what are some of those things that you would recommend? Yeah. So definitely, um, the student athletes need to continue to train at home. Um, if, if, if possible, I mean, you don't know circumstances of student athletes and, you know, what they have at home, but if they can, you know, do find workouts online that are body weight, you don't need anything to, to work out, um, get, get in the backyard and do swings. Even if you don't have a tape, you don't have a net, um, but just figure out ways to, and get creative, um, to continue to work hard and, um, I'm available, um, actually this weekend for everybody, coaches, student athletes, um, whether they're committed or uncommitted. So I'm going to be doing a free seminar for coaches where we can all get together and collaborate. Um, I think it's important that we all can continue to communicate, um, through this time and share information that we have. So that way we can best support our student athletes and parents. So I'm going to be conducting that on Saturday at one o'clock. Um, they can sign up if you go to softballrecruiting.com. There's a link there. Um, but again, I want to get all the coaches together and put all of our brains together to really, um, you know, give the best information to our student athletes and, and parents. And for the student athletes and parents who aren't getting the information from their coaches, I'm going to be doing seminars on Sunday where I'm going to be providing the information that I find out um, from not only that seminar, but college coaches as the phone calls come in. So, um, I believe the uncommitted is at 1 p.m. on, uh, and this is Eastern time, 1 p.m. on Sunday. And then the committed section is going to be at 2 p.m. on Sunday. But I really just want to give them the information that I have um, that, that I can, you know, provide them with right now. Because, again, right now they should be starting the recruiting process if they haven't because there's no sports on TV. The colleges are not playing. The college coaches are sitting at home. Um, really just starting to focus on recruiting is the information that I'm getting from college coaches because there's nothing else to do. So what, you know, can the girls be doing right now in order to put themselves ahead? So that way, when we do start playing again, the college coaches want to come see them um, and they're on that list and high on that list. So what's one thing that the parents could be doing to help their child out, out right now in this point uh, in time with what's going on? I mean, um, a lot of parents, a lot of families have been impacted by the situation. Um, like we said, we don't know the timeline. We don't know if it's, you know, one month, two weeks, three months. What could parents be doing right now to give their kid, their child an edge in this recruiting process? Yeah, so I think just educating them of what they should be doing. Um, I'm sure, and my student athletes sometimes have a hard time um, sitting down and writing these emails and, you know, college coaches know when a parent, it's coming from a parent and the parents are writing the emails. Um, but, you know, just pointing them in the right direction. Um, what kind of school do they want to be going to? Do they want to go to a big school, small school, far from home? Um, do they need to stay close? If, you know, if you have a student athlete who can't be five minutes without her parents, um, probably shouldn't be looking at a school that's, you know, a couple hours away. So just really pointing them in the right direction of, you know, where to be looking for the schools skill, skill wise, what fits them? Um, what do they want to major in? So really just help pointing them in direction to create that target list of schools. And then, you know, providing them that opportunity to, to send the video. Maybe the parent is taking video for them. Um, I have some kids who just prop their phone up on a bucket and take the video for themselves. So, I mean, parents can help, just help support the student athletes through this process um, and really figure out, you know, what 
what do they want? Like help ask questions, pro questions. What do they want? I always ask my student athletes, if you had to pick a school today, which school do you pick? And it's always, the parent always looks at the kid and the kid's like, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, just help support the student athletes through this process and help educate them, I think is the best thing they can do. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because, you know, there, we've had a bunch of people on our show that, um, you know, ended up transferring colleges after their first choice. And it was basically, they just made a decision too soon. Uh, wasn't what they thought it was going to be. So as a blessing in disguise, I'm not trying to say that this is the greatest thing that's ever happened, but in this trying to take a positive from this whole shutdown is, Hey, now you can really get educated on the school, find out what you really want and make, make your decision based on, absolute facts and in, in, edu- in the education that you've given yourself, you know, on all of this. So, I mean, I think it really kind of opens up the opportunity for them to, to get educated. Yeah. And I've, I've worked with some student athletes um, that are actually in the college world rep now, and they've reached out just for some advice and they picked the school for the, like the brand, the logo, it's the SEC. Right. And they go, they're not starting, they're miserable. And then they transfer and go to another logo and brand um, to the ACC. And they're not happy because they don't mesh well with the coaching philosophies. So it, it just didn't work out. So now they're coming to me asking me questions about, okay, what's the process? How do you do this process? And that's my ultimate goal is I want my kids to go and love their school, love their coaches. Um, and it needs to be the right fit. So how do you figure out that right fit? And you have to go through the process. And yes, it's a long and tiring process, but it does work. Um, and, you know, the kids who I've helped are, are happy. And that's my goal. Don't, I mean, parents, don't you want your kids to go and be happy and love the school? And it might not be the school that you thought it was going to be. Right. So. Now, what would you suggest in this down period? Um, you said about just, is it an email um, that the athlete should be writing to the coach? Is that where they should start from? Um, with getting uh, coaches their information? Uh, should they have a video together to start with? Or, you know, just I, I know you probably dive more into this in the one on one stuff and the group stuff, but just kind of a, a basic outline for the general person who may not have a clue of even what to do or, you know, what to say. Yeah. So if you're just getting started in this in this process, um, my starter pack gets you through the beginning part of the process. And I think it's a couple hours long, Um, but it really gets you through the beginning part of the process of how do you create your target list of schools? How do you send that first email? What should it say? What video should you include? How do you get that video seen by the coach? And then the coach says, okay, I need to follow this kid. You know, this is somebody I need to go see. Um, But for those student athletes who haven't started, they need to start by creating that target list of schools that are, that's realistic for them. Um, and from there, they need to go send their first emails and introduce themselves. And then ultimately, when I was a D1 coach, I watched the video before I read the email. So the, the video is going to do one or two things. It's either going to get you on the list to be seen or it's going to get you just shoved to the side and kind of deleted. So the video is probably the most important part of the process um, and, and really getting it out there. Now, my kids right now, um, when this all first came out and the school started shutting down, I think the Ivy League was first, I notified them right away. And what I did was I told them they need to send emails or texts to the coaches right away. Um, just, you know, a- apologizing that their season's been canceled, say they're sorry, but be safe. Um, so I, I notified, okay, here's what you're going to say. You're going to say it now because, you know, you want to be present in the moment showing that you're staying up to date and then, you know, show that you care and, you know, that you're keeping up. So then after that happens, other, other, um, schools started shutting down. And as they did start to shut down, my kids stayed on top of it and sent those messages right away because it's important when you're first in the, you know, getting, getting the information out first and, you know, showing that you care. And if you're a college coach and you get that right away, you're like, Oh, this kid's following, she cares. Um, So that's what my kids did first. Then this week in the beginning of the week, um, I had my kids send, um, you know, because the college, if you remember at the beginning of this week, the, um, the schools started getting everybody off campus 
because they had been shut down. So what my kids did was send another email um, with video updating them with what they were doing. We were shut down up here. Um, so a lot of the kids couldn't leave their homes um, in the Philly area. So my kids had, you know, fresh video for them and, you know, just explaining what they're doing during this time and actually mapped out exactly what they're going to be doing during the shutdown, like sending them a schedule this way. Um, you know, the college coach can see that they're on top of it. They're showing, you know, hey, here's my schedule. I have a routine. I'm self-sufficient. Um, so again, just guiding them through this process step by step and telling them exactly what to be do doing and when to do it. And that's ultimately what my goal is with softballrecruiting.com is to educate families, players, and to, you know, let them know what they should be doing when they should be doing it in order to be successful in this recruiting process, because it's about building relationships with the college coaches and showing that you care. Now, one thing I want to ask about this and, and what's the long-term impact of athletes not being able to go to make those on-campus visits, uh, particularly right now. I mean, obviously some of the 21, 22, 23 graduates have a while to, to get into that, but like some of these players now that are in that period where you would normally be going to, to make those visits. Um, what's the impact to that and building that face-to-face -face relationship with a coach, do you think? And should athletes seek another form of that, whether it be a video conference or a FaceTime? I mean, you would know more about what goes into that and what's allowed and what's not allowed, but should athletes seek that way of connecting with coaches? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm working actually one on one with a student athlete who is a 2021 um, and she has just kind of started this process, I want to say about a month ago with me. And she first sent out her initial emails. And then when all this happened, she sent out another email, you know, saying that she was sorry that this was happening and, you know, staying up to date. And then she just sent out her next round of emails. Um, she sent them out yesterday and today. And she started getting responses back right away because these college coaches are just sitting in front of their computers. Um, so they're able to respond more to the 21s. She's been on the phone with a couple of coaches talking. The coaches are excited to see her play live. Some of them want to see 15 minutes of a, of a workout. This way they can see her work ethic and her pitches and everything that's going into that. So um, so the 21s need to be getting on the phone with these college coaches. They need to be connecting with these college coaches. They need to be asking those questions. And when they ask to get, you know, hey, can I set up a phone call with the college coaches? A lot of them, if they don't need a 21, they're going to tell them at that point, hey, I'm sorry, we don't need a 21 pitcher. Um, and that's a good thing to know because you don't want to waste your time. Yeah. And you yeah. And you don't want to waste your time with schools that don't, you know, like your skills or want you. So the, she's been on the phone with a couple of coaches, so I'm super excited about that. And then for my 22s and 23s, they're not allowed to talk to coaches right now. They're not allowed to talk to coaches until September 1 of their junior year. Um, so the, for the 22s, that's coming up. But that September 1 date is huge because that's when kids start going on those unofficial visits and or official visits if they want and they can start committing September 1. So for the 22s, if they haven't started this process, they're really late um, and you know, contacting the coaches and all, not that they can't catch up. Um, right now is a perfect opportunity to catch up because the college coaches want to see what they're doing every day. Um, that does not mean bombard them with emails, I promise you, they do not want that. But the 22s really need to get on the ball right now um, and start building the relationship with the college coaches. And the 23s, if they start now, building the relationship with college coaches, they're going to have a ton more options come September 1 of their junior year. So I always tell kids to start August going into their freshman year with the recruiting process. Um, but for those 21s, they need to be getting on the phone and talking and building relationships right now. And, you know, they can call once a week and then, you know, come up with creative ideas how to keep them updated otherwise. And then for the 22s and 23s, they really need to get on the ball with building the relationship one way, because obviously the college coaches cannot email them back. Um, and that's what I'm here for, is I'm here to help those 22s and 23s build that relationship and let them know when they should be sending and what they should be sending um, these coaches. Now, you you give online lessons and in, in, in instruction. And, um, you know, right now, you know, there's probably – been parents just on the fence about, Hey, should I, should I pay for online lessons or should I just go somewhere? But now you can't go anywhere to get lessons, yeah. uh, but online is absolutely 
perfect for this situation. Um, and I'm just curious, um, how has it worked out for how, how beneficial has it been for your athletes to have that ability to be able to work online? And, um, you know, for the parents that are kind of on the fence right now, um, you know, let them know the benefits of it. Yeah, do it. Um, I have had such great success with these online lessons so far this week. Um, it has been amazing for my student athletes. Yeah, I'm not there to, you know, show them, but I can show them over the phone. Um, I'm doing them over Zoom. I'm doing them over the phone. And I'm doing it differently with each one of my clients, depending on their needs. Um, so I just, you know, earlier today, I had a lesson with a 10U kid. So for her, it was more beneficial for her to see and then do. Um, so what I was doing, I was hopping around my office. I had the phone propped up everywhere. Um, and she actually made probably the best progress she has made so far. Um, it was just incredible to see. She's driving out so much more um, because we had to get and we got creative. Um, her father and I over FaceTime. So it was awesome. For some of my older lessons, um, it's more so the video breakdown. So I have some kids who send me video and then we break it down, break down the mechanics of the pitch and what it should look like. And I show them examples um, because I have videos all throughout my phone of examples of what it should look like. So, and then I give them drills to do in order to be successful. And they text me, hey, it's working, hey, it's not. Um, and then some kids have transitioned actually into the recruiting process with me. So I have kids, you know, doing all three where it's either video analysis where I break it down, what should be happening. I have live FaceTime sessions um, with some of my younger kids and it's, you know, they're, they're so cute and they're actually making great progress. Um, they think it's, you know, cool that we're doing this. And then some of my older kids who have not started the recruiting process, their parents have asked, you know, Hey, instead of doing like a hitting lesson, can we start with the recruiting process? So I've kind of done all three and kind of just altered it to, to meet the needs of my clients um, because I just want to see them successful. Now I, I love what you were saying because I was thinking about it and you were talking earlier about sending videos to coaches and things like that. These workouts would be perfect, I mean, especially your online workouts, especially if you, you go and, and get some some online training and they break down your swing or they break down your pitch and they notice something, you can fix it. And then you'll have all this video footage of you working out, correcting those mistakes that you maybe you would have sent to the coach before you found out you're having that issue, you know? So I, I think it's kind of cool. You can build your, um, your video library to be able to send out to coaches. Yeah. I actually have an older client. Um, she's a sophomore in high school. She actually texted me and said, I've never watched so much video of myself. I actually understand it now. She was, I understand it more than I ever did. And not only is she posting her videos, but she's posting what she's working on and why she's working on it. Because the college coaches know exactly what you're doing wrong. You can send video all day long and they're like, oh, you know, she, she's not getting the back hip through. And if you say that, that's what you're working on and how you're working on it. You're showing the college coaches, hey, you're educated and you're working on this. Um, it's not a bad thing to point out your flaws as long as you do it in the right way and you show that you're trying to correct these things. Um, so it's been beneficial for, for me and my clients. It's been awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fantastic, and I think that kids, her learning ability will probably her, those fixes will come much easier and faster once you understand the why of why you're doing this drill or that drill and things like that. What things are you doing on online lessons? Is it is it pitching? Is it hitting? Is it fielding? Is it all of uh, the whole part of the game? What 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 are you exactly doing with online lessons? So so far this week, I've done pitching. I've done hitting. And I've done some mental sessions because I have some clients who say they come to me just to clear the air and talk. Um, so I've done all three. Um, I haven't done defense yet, but I'm sure I can incorporate that tennis ball wall, um, you know, and just breaking down the mechanics of it. I have videos of that too on my phone that I can, you know, send to kids and break down the mechanics of, you know, infield, outfield um, for the kids who do have the capability of going outside. Um, but so far, I've done hitting, pitching, and some mental game. And not recruiting. I'm just picturing you throwing a ball against your wall in your office with your camera propped up. <laughs> uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do for the kids. <laughs> now, for anyone who, um, you know, just to put it out there, if, you, if they want to get an online lesson, what type of things would they need at home to be able to do this work with you? 
I mean, I'm I'm willing to get creative. Uh, I have a I, I could not find a bat. You know, you're a softball coach for how long and you can't find a bat at home. Um, I have a PVC pipe that I'm using as my bat. Um, so I just I just tell my clients to get creative. Um, you know, do you just have a bat? Um, do you have a bat and ball? Um, we can do drills where you're throwing the ball up and learning contact points. Um, what, you know, what do you have available to you? And, you know, I, I get creative with my lessons. Some of my lessons can pitch and they have a catcher. Some can throw it into, you know, I had, oh, you know, I had a kid ask me if she, all she goes, all I have is a lacrosse net. Um, and I said, well, pitch into that. That's, that's fine with me. Um, so just being creative of what the kids have and, you know, working with whatever they have um, to make it work. Now, one thing I want to ask is, without this high school season, the majority, some of some parts of the country play in the fall, um, which I find a little weird, but it happens. <laughs> um, yeah. But without this high school season for many players, what do you expect the summer uh, travel softball season to be like once we get there? Yeah, I mean, are we going to see kids that have, I mean, I guess in, what I'm asking is, do you think there's going to be this big gap between kids who've been working their butt off since they were told no school or, you know, and kids that really haven't done a whole lot. And I don't think there's a lot of people out there that want to be that program that's having these mandatory workouts right now. Obviously, I don't think many places can even do it. But I, what, where do you see it being at once everybody can finally get onto the field? Yeah, I think you're definitely you might see a gap um, between the kids who have really been working hard and the kids who kind of took a lot of time off. You could definitely see that gap. Um, and then, you know, it, it's really the coaches. I FaceTime the kids on my team because I run EC Bolts home and I FaceTime my kids on my team all the time. Um, so I'm making sure that they're staying up to date. I actually bought them all Diamond Kinetics um bat sensors before for christmas and i got them all subscriptions so i can keep track of who's hitting who's pitching um so i got them the pitching sensors too and you know so this way i can keep track of okay who's doing what what does your swing look like you know what do we need to be working on um and they're sending me their swings and a lot of my kids are you know breaking down um you know what they're doing and why they're doing it so there yes we could definitely see a gap but you also might see kids who and you know don't knock me, high school ball coaches. This is not every single one of you, um, but some kids who are healthier um, because sometimes they're a little overworked in high school, high school balls. This is not all high school. I am not trying to say all high school coaches overwork their kids. I'm just saying sometimes I've seen it where a pitcher has thrown every single game and every single batting practice and she comes into the travel ball season worn out. Um, so you might see some healthier kids as well. One, one thing I do want to ask though, because you brought it up because we're a big fan, Diamond Kinetics. Uh, we, we've, uh, we have a partnership a little bit with them, um, yeah. for people who don't know about it. Um, what would you say, um, is the best, um, feedback you could give parents out there that maybe, you know, don't have thousands of dollars to spend on some of these things, but diamond kinetics is very affordable for the information you can get. But, um, so what would you say some of the best things about using those are, uh, while you're training? Yeah, so the Diamond Kinetics gives my kids immediate feedback on things like bat speed. Um, what's what's their, their barrel look like when they swing? So a lot of my kids will have it up on their phone and take a swing and then look. And, you know, I have them guess first what, what they feel and then look. It depends on what they're working on specifically. Um, but I do have my kids use it and have their phones with them. This way they get immediate feedback. Um, and it's great for kids who, you know, really don't have um, a lot of money to train. I think it's like a hundred bucks for the sense or a little over a hundred bucks then five bucks a month and you can keep all of your stats. Um, and really why I got it was a lot of the college coaches were started using it for their camps and clinics and comparing those numbers of the campers to the numbers of the kids on their team. Not saying that's the end all be all, but I didn't want my kids to be shocked when they went to a camper clinic and put the bat sensor on and the college coach says something about it. I want them to be educated about it. Um, so it's a great device, not only to use to help improve um, your skills, but also be ready for those camps and clinics. The college coaches are putting it on there and then use it as a recruiting tool too. If you have numbers that are off the charts, send that to coaches. Yeah, I was just going to ask that. That was my next question. I was thinking, well, that would be a perfect little bit of information to send someone because, you know, you can send someone a video and sure, maybe you might have like a, 
like a speedometer up on the wall there so you can see where it's going, how fast it's going. But at the same time, it's like, well, you can give them real information. Everything's spin rate, um, you know, when they're pitching and then also, um, you know, their, their bat speed and, um, you know, all of that information is, especially in the world we're living in today, that everything that you're seeing right now when you're watching professional ball is nothing but technology and, and stats. And I, I just thought, man, that might be a really good thing to send. And, and do you send, do you, do you actually send the videos or do you send like screenshots of, uh, what would you recommend on that? Would you send the, re- the, the video of the swing um, or would you just do screenshots with the stats or how would you do it? Um, it depends on the student athlete. Um, for the kids with some of the numbers that are off the chart, I would definitely screenshot um, a swing and send it to a coach or a pitch. I have a pitcher with unbelievable spin. I'm taking a screenshot of it and sending it to a coach. Um, she's actually committed. So, you know, sending those stats to the coaches to let them know. Um, and then, you know, working on things with it too. Like, you know, the kid who has unbelievable spin, how do we get her spin up and speed up at the same time? Well, here's what we're doing to try and do that. Here's what's worked. Here's what hasn't worked. Um, so just showing that we're, you know, we're play- it's playing. You know, we get away from playing. And this the biggest thing right now is what I told my kids is play. Play with your mechanics right now. We don't know when we're going back to softball, but don't be afraid to try something new. And, you know, you might just fall into something that really works for you. Now, one thing I want to ask you, because I've kind of seen it happen in the baseball world, where college coaches put kids in a box that if you're not 6'1 to 6'5, if you don't throw 90 plus, if you don't do this, if you don't run a 60 and 6 point whatever, I mean... Are you seeing some of that happen in softball as well? Um, and if not, do you see it moving in that direction with things like hit tracks and diamond kinetics and these other, you know, blast motion, these things that coaches can use um, to put kids in those boxes, essentially? Yeah. So I was actually on the coach with an SC or on the phone with an SEC coach um, this past week, and she was talking about the numbers. And they, I believe they use, I don't remember if they use Bless or Diamond, but they use one of them. And, um, but, you know, the girls who have the best numbers don't always have the best results. Um, so, you know, one of their number four batter doesn't really have great numbers, but she's an amazing hitter because of the mental piece of it. So some coaches, I think, yeah, they're, they're leaning heavily on it, but I think other coaches realize there's more to the game um, with the, you know, ju- not just the numbers. Um, so I think it, it falls in both ways. And what you said about, you know, the typical, you know, they're looking for a six foot pitcher. I think sometimes that does happen with coaches. It kind of just depends on the coaching staff and what they're looking for. Um, I know I have a good relationship with a lot of the coaches um, and some have that kind of, you know, stereotypical, this is what I'm looking for. And some, you know, don't care. They just want the best player. So it just kind of depends on the coaches and the relationships you build with them. Now, have you seen a trend of girls turning into showcase players and not so much understanding you get so wrapped up in the numbers and I got to get my bat speed up, get my bat speed up, bat speed up, but you can't identify a ball from a strike to save your life or, you know, you run really fast, but you can't pick up the coach and take an extra bait. Like, do you start to see kids? Are you starting to see more of this maybe? Because I've seen it in the baseball world where guys are flat measurables man they they get off the bus and they look fantastic in gym shorts and a t-shirt and you put them in a game and they look like they hadn't played in in a long time so are you have you seen any of that in the softball world and you know if so how can people avoid that trend yeah so i at the nfca conference this year i did one of the meetings that was before the conference with a lot of coaches and this was a big topic and a big debate Um, A lot of the travel ball coaches were saying, this is what we have to do. And then a lot of the actual college coaches were saying, we know, we see it, we're getting the players and they can't compete when they get here. Um, So my argument to it was, you know, I run a team, so I understand it, but building the culture of winning is, is something that I think is important, but also supporting your teammates. Um, I can put any kid on the field on my team at any time and I still expect to win. I don't care where they are position wise. I don't care if, you know, somebody is there to see a kid and I put her in five different positions. Um, I still expect to win. Um, I also expect my kids to support each other. When I pull a kid off the bench and put her at shortstop because the coach is there to see her, you probably see my shortstop who's coming off the field high fiver. 
because, you know, building the, the culture of supporting each other as well. Yes, we go to tournaments where, you know, we have to put our best nine out there because we're competing, you know, to win. But I expect to win all the time because I want my kids to have that in them when they get to college. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, some kids are going the showcase route, but I think it's ultimately depending on the coach and what's important to the coach that they're playing for. Um, because ultimately you're the leader of them and then that coach has to portray it to the parents. I really believe in the coach parent relationship um, because when you have that coach parent relationship, um, it really helps, you know, build the kid. I feel like I'm another parent to the kids. Um, so, you know, I can be hard on my kids because, and go to the parents and tell them why. Um, so I, I really believe in that coach parent relationship to help build the best player possible. Um, and, and, you know, it's really up to the coach and what they believe in and what they instill into their players. But yeah, I do see the showcase teams, um, you know, falling into that trap of, you know, Hey, we're just showcasing. But again, the college coaches can see that too. Um, and they want kids who are going to come out and compete. I, I just shared you, you talk, you brought up something here that just, it hit home to where I was at today with where we're at. And I shared a video to our team uh, and we coach a baseball team. Uh, I coach a 16 U team and the eight U team with uh, the Dan's son is on. And I shared to both groups because uh, it hit kind of hit home is the Brittany Rogers video from a few years ago when mm -hmm. coach pinch hit for a four time all American when they were down by two runs with a freshman. And she was at the top of the dugout cheering this freshman on who just took her spot in the lineup yep. and the, it's a grand slam. That is the team. That's the philosophy. That's winning culture. That's, you know, assuming your role on the team and understanding the situations. And those are some of the things I'm afraid of the, from the, from the great players. I think you're not going to lose that, but from the, from the middle ground of players, I think that role and those assignments and those parts of the game kind of get lost in it. And I asked all the parents like share this with your kid. I don't care that it's a softball game because everything that happens in this video is what team sports is about. And, you know, I think what you're talking about in the team and what's important to the coach um, is important. And hopefully you find a set of parents and a set of kids that have the same mindset as you as a coach and can agree on it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, the kids have to learn how to win, um, not just in sports, but in life. We have to teach these things so that way they're successful in life later on down the road. So absolutely, I definitely teach my kids how to win. Um, I hate losing. They know this. Um, talk to any of them. But, you know, I also understand it is a game. Um, but, you know, teaching them, you know, how to win and how to win the right way is, is super important, but also be supportive of their teammates because they know they've been, you know, for the kids that are committed on my team, they know that when it was their turn to go out there because the coaches were there to see them, the kids who were younger and, you know, maybe the coaches weren't there to see them yet were supportive on the bench. And then, you know, the, the roles reverse. Um, so it's just it's really cool to see. Now, we, we've talked about a lot of things here today and um, a lot of it we didn't even have planned, which is great. Cause like, this is such a, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, great. Now I'm coughing. Yeah. Uh, this is a um, crazy time for all of us. And uh, we're all kind of winging it um, when it comes to like, all right, trying to make, trying to look at the positive and things and how you look at the positive when you got social media filled with all this garbage and uh, you see all this scary stuff. Some of it's true. Some of it, who knows if it's true, who knows? Yeah. Um, but social media, I, I know you've touched on this before. And I actually just saw a post that you had done maybe a week ago. Um, in this time, uh, you know, if you look on social media now, I, I got friends that are posting, taking, you know, beer bongs uh, on St. Patrick's Day or, or you know, hey, I'm stuck at home, but I'm taking shots. Obviously, you get, you're working with a lot of high school kids. They're not going to post that kind of stuff. Some may. Um, talk about uh, real quick that uh, social media etiquette, especially now with, with you know, you're sitting in the house and you're, you're bored and, you just want to post something to make your friends laugh. What what is what are some things they need to really watch right now? I think it's heightened right now because the college coaches have nothing else to do but to be on your social media, um, especially for the kids that they're super interested in. The college coaches are starting to follow those kids and see what they're doing every single day. So what I love to tell my kids is your social media is your marketing platform. It's telling who you are as a person. Um, so right now I'm really directing my kids to be posting, what are they doing training softball wise? Um, what are they doing to give back right now? 
Um, what are they doing school wise? What are they doing SAT, ACT wise? Um, there's so many things that they can be posting right now. And it's not about the likes they get from their friends. It's about marketing themselves as a, you know, softball student athlete, because right now is the time to reach these college coaches via social media. And it's not just them. It's also their parents. Um, yeah. when I was a college coach. I was going to your parents page because I wanted to see what your parents were doing. Um, because, you know, they're, they're ultimately, you know, building your character as a kid. And right. then, and then going to the team page to see what your coach is posting and what the team is posting because they have influence on you as well. So just seeing, you know, who is surrounding the kids um, and what they're posting right now. So again, I actually have a, a kid I was working with um, lose a scholarship opportunity for something that was posted on social media and it wasn't even that bad. So um, well, in her parents' eyes, it was not that bad. So what I always like to tell parents and kids is, are you, what you're posting, are you okay willing and willing to lose a scholarship opportunity over it? Um, if you're not willing to lose a scholarship opportunity over a, you know, you know, your stomach showing, then don't post it. Um, so really what are those boundaries, uh, for, for student athletes? Cause you never know what's going through the college coaches heads and what they're looking for. Um, so make sure they keep it clean and also the parents keep it clean. I've seen, gosh, I've seen kids, high school kids drinking on their parents' pages, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the background, just, it, it's crazy things and this stuff never goes away. Um, and also, you know, some of these schools are, you know, figure out ways to dig deep into the private stuff that they think is hidden. So, or the Finsta accounts. Uh, the fake Instagrams that kids have, they find, they find this stuff, they find a way uh, because ultimately their jobs are on the line when they take kids. So they're looking for that kind of stuff. So again, social media is huge um, and it can really help you or it can really hurt you. Well, I, I just thought about this and, you know, I know like some parents might want their kids to have um, uh, private, pages and blocked, you know, only, only to people that re request and only take in people that, you know, so in this situation here, um, let's just say you have a college coach is interested in you. Um, but you have an Instagram account that is private. Um, is that, is that kind of a, um, I don't know, is that a red flag for a coach when they see a private account or, or like, cause they can't see what they're up to. I mean, I, I don't know. how does that work? I, I've never even thought about it. I don't know if it's a red flag. I think there's, and there's so many rules around this. Some schools say that you cannot request kids. Gotcha. Um, so because they've had issues in the past, uh, I know other schools and coaches that just go follow the kids. Um, they'll go request them and, you know, cause they, they can see anyway, whether they request them or it's public, um, if right. the coaches start following them. So, I mean, in this case, um, I, I tell my kids to keep it public and a lot of my parents, you know, some of the, the more strict ones have their accounts on their phones so they can see what's going on as well. Um, and they get really excited when a coach follows them. Um, and it's, it's really cool to see. but again, like, um, I, I tell kids, you know, you don't need an account for just softball and then an account for your private life. The coach wants to see all of it. So I really like to stress, Hey, you know, make sure everything's on there is clean, but you have one account. You don't need two accounts for this. Now, one thing I want, we haven't really talked about it um, here. I know we kind of dove into it the first episode a little bit. Can you just talk here before we wind down about how important having your academics are in this whole recruiting process? Because without that, you could be probably the greatest athlete and your opportunities are going to be shrunk. Right. I mean, so mm -hmm. can you, hammer that point home a little bit for some people who may not understand that? Yeah. So the better your academics are, the more opportunity you're going to have as a student athlete and family. So if you have higher academics, you could go Ivy League, you can go Patriot League um, and go to those schools that have higher academics and you just have more options that are available to you. And that's just not your G. That's not not just your GPA, but that's also your SAT and ACT scores. Um, so the higher we can get your GPA and the higher your SAT, ACT, um, the more opportunities you're going to have, and the more schools you can reach out to and go to. Um, so higher academics are absolutely huge. But not only that, but a lot of schools can stack scholarships. So what that means is they can give you academic money on top of athletic money. So say you know you're the last kid in the 21 class, and they only have 50 percent. Um, athletic money that's left, 
maybe our academics get you another 50% and now you're at a full ride. Um, so it could be, I know some schools that give $30,000, if not more, just for academics. So you're talking $30,000 a year just for having straight A's and a good SAT, ACT score. So it could be huge. Um, so what I tell my freshmen is you need all eight. It's like a, this whole AB thing, like you, I know how much money this can save your family. Um, there's a lot more, I'm sorry, there's a lot more academic money out there than there is athletic money. So absolutely, academics are absolutely amazing and huge for families. Excellent. Love it. Um, Rachel, before we wind down with the last uh, couple questions and get you out of here, uh, any final thoughts, anything that we didn't bring up that you want to touch on or maybe a final message to the parents and, and the, the players listening? Yeah, just, just educate. Well, going back to recruiting, just educate yourself on the process. Um, it's, it's a lot of unknowns and the people who haven't worked with me before, they, they tend to say after a couple of months, I didn't even know all of this existed. I didn't know that there was a plan. You know, my coaches just told me to email and I didn't know that there was more information out there. So if you haven't educated yourself fully on the process, get your hands on the process. Um, softballrecruiting.com. I educate people. I don't promise you the world. I just educate you on what the process is and how to do it and how to execute it. Um, and I, I really just want to see girls in the right schools for them. Um, right now I have a coupon code because I know everybody's home spring break um, in all caps, no spaces this week only. Um, so, and all, you can always reach out to me anytime if anybody has any questions, but again, just educate yourself on the process because you're talking 300, $350,000. That's like a house. That's like buying a house. Yeah. And how much an education could be. It's ridiculous. And yeah. what you go find some guidance before you go buy a house to like inspect it first and, you know, do your due diligence. So, you know, it's a huge decision. So, I just want to educate people on the process from my, the days when I was a college coach and what I used to do and then the information that I'm getting from college coaches right now, um, you know, to help guide them through the process to really make a successful process. And so they don't end up in that transfer portal. Now, really quickly, um, will you be hosting your tournaments, your showcases uh, that you do for your program? Is that still um looking to go this summer um or have you started to look at possibly changing things up for that yeah so right now everything is unknown my tournament is june 12th um so again we're gonna follow what the government is telling us to do um if they say hey you know everything's shut down except for you know hospitals and food and gas then we're obviously going to be shut down um we're not willing to put you know lives at risk um, for the game of softball, um, you know, it, it is a game, but we do love it probably more so than a game. Um, but we just aren't willing to do that. So we have some contingency plans um, that we've talked about. Um, it is it is a hot topic. We were going to start on the schedule and kind of pause to, you know, see kind of what's going on. But again, we have to go on as things are going to go on as planned right now, um, because we don't want to not be ready if things do open up in the next month or two. Um, you know, it like Ch I think China right now is at eighty percent capacity, as, as, you know, as a go. So we just want to make sure we're ready either way. Um, so we've definitely talked about it with the group of people that I work with. Awesome, awesome. I just wanted to, to touch on that because I know that's a big part of what you do with your program. So um, yeah. an update on that, and for those who will be traveling in, um, yeah. where can people? I know you brought up your website. Uh, where can people find you on social media? And all of that, if they want to reach out to you, what's the best way to do it? If you want to give a rundown now um, to, to let everybody know something, follow along because you have so much good information and so much insight that um, even people that have been through this process more than once probably don't know. So if for anyone not following you, they should jump on board. Yeah, definitely. Follow me. Um, I believe my Facebook is Rachel Coleman Sports LLC. You'll see my logo on there. Um, I have a picture from when I was at the World Series as the, the header at the top. Um, but Rachel Coleman Sports LLC is me. You can follow me on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, Rachel Coleman Sports. Um, I'm not sure what my actual at handles are. Sorry. I'm, I'm an awful person. I don't know that. Um, but if you Google Rachel Coleman Sports, I'll come up. You can go to rachelcolemansports.com um, and send me a message at the bottom if you have any questions about anything. Also, softballrecruiting.com. Um, recruiting is probably 
the biggest thing that I'm involved in, the biggest part of the process, uh, because that is where the money is. Um, so softballrecruiting.com is me. All of the information comes from me, which comes from the college coaches directly. So again, I'm here to just educate you on the process. So I do have a private Facebook group. Uh, if you go to softballrecruiting.com, I will add you. If you put in your, I think it's like the information, um, you can come add me on the softballrecruiting.com Facebook group. And then I put all my recruiting information out on the Rachel Coleman Sports Instagram and Twitter pages as well. Excellent. Rachel, thank you so much. I know this was very like impromptu and I, I loved it because I mean, there's so many, so many things to talk about and it's such an important topic. So we really appreciate you taking the time. Um, as always, we're going to ask this question. Um, I'm going to change it up a little bit. And if you have a new answer, we're going to have Tyler work to try to find the song. Oh, yeah. um, but, <laughs> so let's just say uh, we're playing softball this, this summer. All right. Some way, somehow we're going to be playing softball. Uh, and your team takes the field for the first time. What song is being played as they run out on the field? Oh, as they're being ra ra fighter, Christine Aguilera. That is always my go-to. That was my walk-up song. So Christine Aguilera, fi fighter is definitely my song. Excellent. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate you, you coming on. Uh, wish you the best and hope to catch up with you again. This was fun. Absolutely. Take care, guys. Stay safe.